A very cold and blustery winter's welcome to Northern Ireland and to the River Ban. And where I'm standing here at Toon Bridge is the famous eel fishery, which under the direction of Father Kennedy produces something like 850 tonnes of eels per year for the European market. And they're trapped in quite a unique way through this system of gates and cages here. It really is a very strange affair spread right across the river, rather like a racing track grid. The river band's enormous watershed starts near Portertown by entering Loch Ney, one of the largest sheets of water in Europe. The band then leaves Loch Ney and flows beneath the bridge at Tomb where we're now standing. A little while further on, it enters Loch Beg, and then it comes out and goes through New Ferry, which is a very good spot and somewhere where we might well try. It carries on flowing downstream through Port Glenome and on to Kilray, where I believe there's a canal and again that might well be worth a try. It carries on flowing in a northerly direction and enters the weir at Carn Road, where regular viewers of go fishing may remember that we caught salmon there a few years ago. Finally, the band spews its waters into the North Atlantic at Port Stewart. Fortunately, to help me out over the next few days, I'm going to be fishing with two world champions, Bob Nudd and Kevin Asher, so I'm in the very best of hands. But looking at the river, we're going to need some luck too. <laughs> Well, here we are on the Van New Ferry. As you can see, it's a very wide stretch of the river, very deep and very windswept, although at the moment the wind isn't too bad. And we had a, quite a heavy carpet of overnight snow, which has lowered the temperatures, and it's very difficult fishing indeed. We haven't had any bites yet, and we're quiver tipping, holding the rods up high on tall rod rests so that the flow doesn't push the feeder into the bank. All I've had is one tiny bite. What about you, Bob? No, nothing at all, no signs. I'm a bit worried, really. It's a bit of a grueler, isn't it? It is. I would have thought we would, uh, we should have had some indication by now. There's a lot of fish here, normally. You know, I remember when I came last year, you know, with Kevin and Martin, and we had some tremendous bags of fish, but of course then, it, in fact, I can't even see where we were sitting. It was that much lower. I think it was opposite the ski jump in those reed beds, but of course it's all completely covered now, isn't it? Yes, I, I should think it must be uh, three foot up, this river. But the, the flow still seems to be fairly steady. We, sh we should catch. I think if we leave it out long enough each cast, we're gonna, something's going to come on the end. But, but it's a shame, really. It's, it's what you matchmen get used to, having to settle for second best or the peg somebody gives you, isn't it? Oh, yes. But, but this water's match fished every week by the, by the Irish uh, anglers, the Irish match anglers, and it, and it usually produces 40 to 50 kilo winning bags, sometimes more. And that's every week. So well, I'd certainly like to see some of those big hybrids that I caught last year. They're tremendous fish, aren't they? Oh, they're lovely fish. Yeah, they're two to three pounds and... A uh... lot of weed on the line here. A lot of weed. I put a small shot about three inches from the hook here just to ensure that bait stays static, but it didn't seem to make any difference that cast. I'd like to see some sun <laughs> yeah. Even if you miss the bite, at least you know they're there and feeding, don't you? Yes, the, the bites are usually quite violent. The fish, are, they have to swim, they have to be fairly active in this sort of a river. And uh, you can't usually miss them. You can miss hooking the fish, but you can't miss seeing the bite. Well, if we keep plunking it out there in the same line, that's a fair old depth, that, you know, isn't it? What? 12, oh, yeah, 12 to 14 foot yeah. out there, and you've got two ounces of lead on your feeder, so it's going down fairly quickly. So it's yeah, 14 foot probably now, perhaps 15. The secret, of course, is to keep the bait going in, isn't it, and build a an amount right, of feed up on of the at bottom. least seven, eight, perhaps ten feederfuls, and uh, by then we should be getting some response. What are we going to do if we don't? That's a very good question. I would. Uh, I would say we'll get a bite. We'll get some fish soon. 
Hello, you're in. Yes, good, reasonable fish. Good, well, it's about time. Yeah, well, we thought we'd take about 10 casts and we get some feed in and, yep. and actually get the fish responded. It's a good fish. They, they, they fight quite well. Even the roach run to a pound here, so it's... Trying to get under your feet there, John, look. <laughs> Give it a bit of size, Stray. It's a hybrid. Oh, it's a nice fish. Not, not, not tremendous size, about a pound and a half, I should say. Well done. Let's hope that's a good omen, Bob. Lovely, clean-looking fish, though. So I don't know anywhere you can go fishing. Well, in Europe, let alone Britain, where you can catch hybrids of this size, no, do you? and this quality is a beautiful, clean fish. Pound and a half. Lovely-looking fish, John. Good. Probably the one that you lost, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> You let it get by to me. Mm. <laughs> Hello, a little twitch there. I think we'll catch a few now. Well, it's looking good, I must say. It's strange, this is such a bleak scene here. You wouldn't think there was that much wildlife, but what with that cormorant diving and coots along the far bank and that little robin taking our maggots. And now look at what a lovely sight that is. Family of swans angling across the river and you can see how fast the river is they're not making much headway at all really has got a pull to it in again yeah oh yeah in no. again yeah a big fish this time hybrid again hey i can't have this nuddy you catching all the fish you know <laughs> <laughs> well i think you must have put me in the best spot today john <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit of good fortune no i don't believe that for a, <laughs> for a minute Oh, it's only, it almost snagged me then, is there is snags in close. So if you do catch one, make sure you keep it well up, John. What do you mean if I do? <laughs> when you do, so I apologise, <laughs> when you do catch one of the bigger ones. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, certainly looking a little bit better now, isn't it? Suddenly I don't feel so cold. No, that's right. Well, not, not too cold anyway. I mean, it is a, it's a raw day, let's face it. But... Uh, See how hard fighting these are. Look at the rod bending. It's uh... The worth of this river, it really, is the fact that you can catch fish like this in such terrible yeah. conditions, isn't it? Another hybrid. Yes, bigger one it's this good time. Good fish too, isn't it? Yes. Nearly two pounds, this one. Really hard fighting fish. Safely in the net. Yes, lovely two pound fish, John. And the maggots sucked. Oh, really smashed them. I mean, obviously oh, well, very hungry fish. Oh, oh, I'm in as well. Oh, they're coming on now. Yes. Great. Time of day. <laughs> oh, what's this? These roach really do bang that rod to it, don't they? Yes, another nice roach. That is, it's that's another nice roach that suddenly turned into a perch. <laughs> Look at that. Unusual fish for this. Yeah, it's nice to get a perch, isn't it, every now and again? I know some places in Ireland you get a bit plague with them, but not pretty. As a splash of colour to a freezing cold day like this. Oh. Just hold his spine down there while we unhook him. Love catching perch. In you go. Ooh. In deep water like this, you can actually feel the feeder going down. There it is, it's stopped. Good. A little bit more to allow for the current, bowing the line. And there we are. That should just hold. That's lovely. Oh, this is definitely a hybrid, Bob. Yes, looks like it. Rod's bent well. <laughs> I don't half go, don't they? Incredible. Yeah. We've got those deep bodies against this flow, haven't they? Absolutely incredible. Oh, that really is going, that fish. Lovely. 
<laughs> John, if I didn't know any better, I'd think this was a four pound Wenson shove. <laughs> it's a big fish, that, John. <laughs> it's two pounds. Oh, it's a good one, isn't it? Good fish. Come on, come to Johnny. Gotcha. Oh, that is a good one. Oh. Most unusual fish, these hybrids. This one's very much like a rose. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Strange how this river seems to produce just hybrids, Bob, isn't it? Far more hybrids than roach and bream. Yes, I don't, I don't know the reason for it, but... Uh... I don't know, a lot of people reckon that hybrids don't breed, you know, but I'm not so sure. I'm sure that a percentage might even do that. Look at that lovely black edging to the, the tail there. Just obvious that the roach and, and the bream must spawn in the, in the same area. Right, yeah. You can see the hybrids, of course, that's got a, a very long anal fin there. And of course there's no red in it, but if you put this on a piece of paper and did a trace and it would look almost like that of a roach, wouldn't it? In shape, yes, definitely. Lovely fish. Oh, that's cold with that wind coming up now, isn't it? I'm going to check my thermometer, I'll just put it down here a minute ago. Oh, <laughs> that's a gnats above freezing. Just a gnats. It's calls for strong measures. Oh. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Nothing like a drop of whiskey on a cold day like this. Actually, remain. Remember in a previous programme of Go Fishing that we visited the river team in Worcestershire and we looked at the lovely hop fields and showed you how beer was made. Well, here in Northern Ireland, not very far away, is a distillery. And it might be just the sort of time to go and have a look, see how whiskey's made. So I think I'm going to leave you, catching nothing, I'm getting cold, and I'm going to go and have a look. Oh. But before I go, let's have a look and see what the fishing's been like, see what we've got in the nets in just a few hours when we really thought it wasn't going to be very good at all. Ooh! Oh, this is cold. Oh, I've got more than I thought I got in here, Bob. Oh! Yes, lovely net of fish. Well, I don't know, Bob, they're lovely fish, aren't they? Beautiful, yes. Cold, beautiful but beautiful hybrids. big hybrids. Freezing we haven't done bad either, no, have we? No. What, about a baker's dozen a piece there? I would have thought so. The odd bream in between and yeah. an odd good roach <laughs> as well. And really, in conditions like these, it's fantastic you can catch anything at all, so we've got to be pleased with this hole. <laughs> Very good. And here we are at the world's oldest distillery. In fact, they've been making whiskey here at Bushmills for over 800 years. And this is where it all starts in this huge steel vat that they call the masher. Water from a deep spring, which runs through peas, is put in here along with germinated barley, and then it's mashed around for 45 minutes so that all the starch is converted into sugar. And it's the most glorious smell. Whew. Do you know, you could almost get drunk in here just walking around. It's that intoxicating. And this is the next stage. The liquid's drawn off from the mash tank, comes into this room, is mixed with the yeast, and then it goes into these enormous great big wooden vats for 48 hours where it ferments and bubbles away. And then it goes on to the next stage, which is distilling. 
And here in the distillation room, the fermented liquid is put into these huge copper pots and boiled. And it's boiled three times, which is completely different to most whiskies, which are only boiled twice. And then the alcohol is drawn off as vapour and it's condensed into a clear liquid. The whisky then gets its pale golden colour from being stored for anything between five and twelve years in these oak casks. Thank you. And here it is, the final product. Fully matured Irish whisky. Made into a hot toddy for a cold day like today with cloves, cinnamon, hot water and sugar. Cheers. <clears throat> that is lovely. Well, here we are on the lower ban. As you can see, it's very cold. We've had some heavy overnight snow. And we're on the, the river at Kilray. There's a beautiful weir here and a bit of a canal. But uh, where we were going to fish above the weir and below, it's totally unfishable. It's three, four foot above normal, bombing through, chocolate brown. What do you think of our chances, Kev? Do you fancy this canal? Well, apparently the canal does fish well, but whether we're going to catch any fish today, it's, well, it's debatable with these conditions. It's not exactly good, is it? <coughs> I hate scratching about, don't you? Coming all the way over here and then having to scratch about. Well, we've moved quite a ways down the Mavanaha Canal now, and it's a very raw day. Kev's fixed me up here with a 12 and a half metre pole, all 41 feet of it. I don't think I've ever used anything this heavy before, Kev. Uh, we're fishing in about... 10, 12 feet of water. Why have you rigged us up with a, an elastic on the end? Well, because I think it's going to be a bit difficult today and you're using a pound out length. There is fish here up to three pound and that elastic acts as a shock absorber. Right, so if you get any reasonable size bream, the 18 hook isn't going to rip out of them, yeah? It shouldn't do. Right. It's a nice thing about fishing the, the long pole and short line method, isn't it? You can hold the bait exactly that, where it is because the, the, the pole tips above the float. Well, it's so methodical and there's been uh, so many fish caught on this, using this technique. Weren't you pole fishing uh, on the Newry Canal when you uh, won the World Championships a few years ago? Yes, and it was the, the same uh, technique as this. Long pole, short line, the only yeah. difference was uh, as a, I was using bloodworm for bait instead of uh, maggots and casters and right. worms. Do you think we'd, we'd be better off with bloodworm today in this cold weather or not? It would possibly make them feed. Yeah. There we are. Hello, what you got there? No, no, only a small fish. You crafty That's devil, small. I didn't see that bite there. Well, it looks like a hybrid. Hybrid. Was that Hold a good it. bite, Kev? No, I hardly moved it. I thought it were a skimmer at first. A little bream, but... Uh, don't they feel cold? It is cold. Freezing, don't they? I think they're... Uh, probably not as cold as us, John. Well, as you can see, I've moved down the canal some and I'm already into a, a nice roach. It's not an easy swim to fish this at all, having to slide the, the long pole backwards. The temperature's risen a bit too and it looks as though it's thawing so what with the snow going at least it's going to be a little bit more comfortable and I don't need my gloves on either. I think this is a roach. Yes it is. Oh that's a nice fish. It's 
it's funny with the bream, you know immediately that elastic comes out and down they go. <laughs> <laughs> and they're on the end of 12 and a half metres, you can't really do anything except hang on, it's heading up to my left now. Feels like a very good fish. Whoa! <laughs> that really is, really is moving. Oh, come on. Oh, oh I've turned it. Got to be so careful with this light hook. So careful. Coming in towards the bank here, so I'm going to start shifting the, the pole. It's kiting to my left. That's good, it's coming in. Mm. There we are. Get the pole out of the way. Well, it does feel a good fish. There we go. Oh, it's not a bream at all, it's a hybrid. Big one, too. Come on. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, oh nearly missed it. <laughs> oh, that is a big hybrid. Look at that. Well, that's incredible. Where's the hook? Oh, that's just in the bottom lip. Look at that. Came out straight away, though. Oops, fortunately. Keep still. Oh, that's a lovely fish. Oh, look at that. Beautiful hybrid. Got to be the best part of two and a half pounds, that. Lovely. Well, guys, we've had a real gruel of these last few days. Kevin, have you ever experienced this sort of weather in Northern Ireland before? I've not. Uh, well, we've had the snow. We've had freezing conditions. And to top it all, we've had the flood water. So it's, it's not been good. No, in fact, it's probably the worst condition you could possibly have had, isn't it, really? What about you, Bob? Do you think the methods we've used have been right for, for, for these conditions? I think for us on the lower band, when we fished, was, was the only method to fish a feeder. I mean, it was fast flowing, wasn't it? Very, very fierce currents. We were lucky, but with, with those fierce currents, the fish have to feed at some time. They have to keep moving, so uh, we got some bites and we caught quite a few fish. And, mm. and that's the highest I've ever seen the band, ever. Yeah, I mean, it would have been nice to have come over here and catch the sort of weights that you guys produce in the, in the big matches, wouldn't it? You know, 80 kilos, 90 kilos, and all this sort of thing. But, I mean, in these conditions, you've got to be realistic, haven't you? That's right, it would have been easy normally where we were on, on New Ferries, the best part of the lower band. We would have been looking at 60, 70, 80 kilos of fish the way we were fishing, and uh, it was very, very, really, even for us, it, it wasn't bad, was it? Well, I think we did quite well anyway. And if you'd like to come over to Northern Ireland to enjoy the lovely scenery, particularly along the coast roads and the prolific fishing, then you can fly direct from any number of UK airports to Belfast, or from Stranra you can catch the ferry, which takes just two and a half hours. And then all you need is a licence and the odd permit or two, which entitles you to fish free just about everywhere. But I'll tell you this, next time I come, I'm going to make sure the weather's OK. <laughs> Cheers, John. Cheers. Thank you.